that. Mm. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Let's just tell the Lord that. Let's just tell him we love him. We love you, God. We love you, Lord, and we yearn and we long to love you more, God. And we are so thankful for the cross, Lord. We are so thankful for the sacrifice that your son gave. We're so thankful for redemption, Jesus. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you, God. We love you, God. Oh, Lord, let that drown out everything else in our life, Lord. Our love for you. Our love for you, Jesus. Our love for you, God. Let it drown out everything else, God, because the freedom you've given us, the redemption you've given us. We love you, Lord. We love you, God. Oh, man, when I start, I'm just undone when I begin hearing some of your testimonies and just what the Lord is doing in your life, like in this such a short time. It's like one, just moments with him and your life's turned around, your heart's changed. You can be locked up in something for years. You can be bound by something for so long in so much darkness or have it so hidden for so long. And then that moment with the Holy Spirit when he comes and it's never, ever, ever the same. And you are completely and utterly changed. And God loves our poverty like he loves us in that place like he really doesn't want us in this place of performance or where everything's perfect or where we've got it all together or where where we're super high achievers achievers he loves us in our poverty like he loves us in that broken place that barren place where we're saying God we need you God, we're desperate for you. I'm not talking about being, you know, just being in a horrible place in life, but he loves you in that place where you desperately know how much you greatly need God. How much, how much, that the nothing in life is going to work without him. That nothing in life is going to have value without him. That we're not going to get anywhere. We're not going to progress. We're, gonna, we're not going to have freedom without him. But blessed are the poor in spirit. And when I begin to just empty my heart before the Lord in, in quiet times, and I begin to pour out my, my heart to him, it's in those moments of just surrender like you were doing this afternoon and emptiness like we've done today. You've emptied yourself out. You've emptied out that darkness, all those lies, all that pain, all that grief. You've poured it out at his feet. And when we empty ourselves at his feet, that's the place that he, that he loves. He delights in. He chose to meet you at the cross. Out of all of the places that God could have met you, he destined the cross. He chose, he lived his life to meet you at the foot of the cross. He, he set up the way for your salvation, the way for your redemption to be at the foot of the cross. That was his meeting place. He could have come, just think about it, think, this is God, like, he could have come in any way, he could have torn that veil between you and him, he could have, he could have done something different that was far more the, seemingly victorious, that appeared so much greater, that appeared so much more wonderful, because the cross looks like foolishness when you're perishing, but it's the power of God when you're being saved, And so he chooses to meet you there. He chooses to find you by entering into your suffering, by entering into your pain, by entering into your brokenness, by entering into your shame, your grief, your darkness. He chooses to go to the deepest, most lowest place of your life and bear it upon himself. God, who dwells in the highest place, The most glorious, holy one of all chooses to come to the lowest point of your life. The place that we try and hide from. 
the place that we try and forget or deny or not remember or shrink away from. God says, I want to meet you there. I want to know you there. I want to bring light there. I want to bring life there. I want to bring hope there. I want to bring redemption there to that point. That he would come. Man, when I think it's hard for me to even to even find like sorry, I have to drink something. <laughs> but it's hard for me to even remember and to even find that place in my life where I felt so much shame. Like I really can't remember what that was like anymore. I really I'm like, who who was that girl? who was 18 years old, who was just bound and who was lost and who was, didn't have any, any desire to live, who didn't care if I, if I went to hell. Like, who was that person? I don't even know her anymore because she's dead, because she's gone, because I'm alive in Christ, because Jesus chose to meet me at the cross. And you find yourself there. You find fire there. You find passion there. You come alive there. You start loving God there. You love him because he first loved you. And how did he first love you? But he laid his life down for you. And so when you're going, I want more passion. I want to love you more, God. I want to thirst for you more. I want to desire you more. When you, when you turn those prayers and you turn those cries into looking at the sun and beholding the lamb, it just starts to happen. You, just, you begin to fall deeper and deeper in love with God when you start to see the cross. Man, and, and Good Friday, we remember his sufferings. You know, we remember what he's done. We remember his, his torture and his agony. And, and all this week, you're going to go on this journey with the Holy Spirit. And he's going to take you deeper and deeper into the cross. And I promise you, as you look at him, the Holy Spirit's going to stir a fire and you, a lot of you already carry fire, and you already carry a deep love for God, but as you search deeper into the cross, you're going to find this passion inside of you that's God's passion for his son, that's his love for his son, the son who he sacrificed, the son who he gave. When you start looking at him and you start looking at the cross, that's where it comes alive. That's where that love and that fire comes alive. And that's the journey that we're on together. That's the journey that we'll be on for eternity. <sighs> forever beholding the Lamb, forever seeing the Lamb. This isn't salvation. This isn't the cross wasn't just for, for us to get saved and then, and then go and do signs and wonders. The cross was for us to be undone forever and ever and forever cast our crowns before him, forever lay ourselves before the Lamb, before the glorious risen Lamb of God. Oh man, and it's, right now we're in, this, we're in this time. Tomorrow we're going to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. And we're going to think about that moment that Jesus was raised from the dead. But right now, yesterday was Good Friday. Right now, if you think about it, where, if, if we're remembering the cross and we're going through Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection... What's, what's happening right now? He's in the grave. And what's hap- what, would, what would have been happening in heaven? What would the Father have been doing in heaven? Think about it. All, all night, all day, his son in the grave. The God of all power. The God of creation, the God of miracles, the God of signs and wonders, the God who you've seen move powerfully. He's looking down on his son and he's in heaven. 
His son's body's in the grave. His beloved one. The one who who he sent. His son's body's in the grave. And I don't want to pass by and just try and get to the resurrection and miss what happened in the heart of God. Like, I want to journey with God. I want to go with the Holy Spirit and say what was happening in that time. Heaven was waiting on the sun. Where was the Holy Spirit? Was the Holy Spirit breathing life into the sun? Was the Holy Spirit moving through the sun's body? Was the Holy Spirit comforting the sun? The sun. The one who, this is the Holy Spirit. You felt his love today and you've got to stop and think about like his love for the sun. Yet his body is in the grave. And this is, you know, the Father you can, and you'll go deeper in this all this week. The Father, he's, he's seen his son in the Garden of, uh, the garden of Gethsemane. He's heard his, his son, like in anguish, cry out to him and say, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. He's heard those prayers. He's heard those cries. He's seen his son be brought to the cross. He's seen his son be beaten. He's seen his son with the filth of my sin, with the filth of the world's sin upon him. He's seen his son's broken body. And this is the God who loves. This isn't the God who's indifferent to his son's suffering. This is the God who is moved greatly by his son's suffering and who yearns to move our hearts greatly by his son's suffering, not just by his son's victory, but both. Both. Because they're both glorious. This is the God who held eternal punishment and eternal wrath in his hands. And poured that eternal punishment down upon his son. Never ending punishment upon his son. This is a God who withdraws his presence from his son. And yet there's a period between his death and his resurrection. There's this gap of time. And it wasn't quick. You can think of, if we look at, you can think of Abraham and Isaac. And how Abraham, the Lord, asked him to to lay Isaac's life down. And Abraham had to journey with his son. He had to walk with his son. He had to go somewhere with his son. And he had to lead his son. It says in the Bible that he got up the next morning with his son. So he had to wake himself up. He had to get up. He had to, to get up and he had to journey with Isaac to the place where he would where he would willingly lay his son's life down for the burnt offering, where he would willingly say, I will give my son's life to be consumed. Like, I'm telling you, like, I, there's, no, I'm, there's no way that I can fathom someone doing that to their son. There's no way that I can even comprehend that depth of consecration and obedience to a holy God. But Abraham, he goes... And he journeys with his son. And a day passes. And, and when he, fi- you know, he finally a- arrives there, and he gets to the point where he even ties wood to his son's back. But what happened during that whole journey with Abraham and Isaac? And here you have the Father in heaven, and all that is is a picture to show you the relationship between the Father and Son and Jesus giving his life on the cross. But here you have the Father in heaven who's poured eternal punishment upon his Son, but this is the Son whom he loves. This is the one. He opened heaven so that everybody could audibly hear him declaring his love for his Son. Like, If you were there at that moment, you would have heard the father say, this is my son whom I love. He's bellowed that out from heaven. 
And yet he punishes him with eternal wrath. And yet there's this waiting time in between that we're in right now. That we're remembering right now. After his crucifixion. And before his resurrection. And when I think about that time, I, I, I think, God, like, how did you, how did you withhold your presence? How did you not just send the Holy Spirit? How did you not rush to your son? How did you not just to send tens of thousands and thousands upon angels to, res- to surround him and honor him and worship him and bring glory to him? How did you withhold back your presence from your son for, for a period of time? How did, how did God do that? And it really should be opening the Bible and turning to all these places in the Bible. But, um, but how, does, how does he hold back his presence? H- how could a father do that? You know, if you saw my child run over and like trip over in the middle of the room, I think most of you, if I wasn't there, you'd run and you'd see if they were okay, right? And this is God. This is an all-consuming, loving God holding back his presence from his son. He paid a price to forsake his son. He paid a price to withhold his presence from his son. And he paid that price because he wants to come. He wants to come now. He wants to come to you. He wants to meet you. He desperately yearns for you to be in his presence. He desperately thirsts for it. He longs just for intimacy with you. He longs just for that heart connection with you. He withholds his presence from his son so he can send his presence to you. There is a price that the father paid to send his presence to you. There isn't a veil anymore. The veil's been torn. There is no veil. We can go into the throne room of God. We can go into the presence of God. We have access by the blood of the Son. We don't have to earn his presence. We don't have to fight for his presence. We can go in to his presence. He's paid the price. He's made the way for you to enter in by the blood of the Lamb, washed, being seen by the Father. The Father looking at you like he looks at his Son, looking at you with love, loving you like he loved his Son. How do we, oh, how do we even comprehend such vast love? And all this week, I've had this question, and I feel like God's, it's like God's telling me to ask him, will, I, will you come? And I'm, I'm wrestling with it, and I'm, I've, because I know he'll come, but he's asking me to ask him so he can affirm to me that he'll come. Does that make sense? So it's like he's telling me, Mary, ask me, will I come? So I come before God, and I go, God, will you come? Yes, I'll come. Oh, come. God, will you come? God, will you come? Oh. You know, when I think about the resurrection, and I think of that moment when the Father finally send the Holy Spirit to his son. Romans 6 verse 4. The father sent the Holy Spirit and he sends the Holy Spirit to the son and he raises the Holy Spirit from the dead. That moment when the Holy Spirit's reunited with the son. When his son, who he punished, is raised from the dead. The resurrection is so precious. It's so precious when you think about it. When you think about that between God, when you think about it between the Father and the Son. 
It's so beautiful. It's so holy. It's so awesome that he would flood his body with glory. <sighs> that every single fiber of his being that had been drowned in in eternal punishment and eternal hell becomes flooded with life and with honor and with power and with grace and with redemption. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God does not give the Spirit by measure. For he whom God has sent speaks the word of God, for God does not give the Spirit by measure. He doesn't measure out for you a portion of his presence. He doesn't just give this quantifiable amount of his Spirit to you. He doesn't say, okay, you've been this good, so you're going to get this much. You've done this, you've earned this, so I'm going to pour out revival. You've quali- you're qualified here, so I'm going to give you, you my presence. No, he doesn't give with measure. It's not a give and take thing with God. He gives his son, you get his presence. When you say yes to him, when you want him, when you come before him and you say, I need you, my life's a mess. I want to get right with you. I need your blood. I need you to wash me. I need you to clean me, have it all, take it all, take my life for your glory. And he says, here I am, here I am every day in your failure, every day in your weakness. We fail daily, glory to God. He can come with his presence because we still need him. We still need him daily. I didn't just need him when I got saved. (laughs) I needed him then. And I can say today I need him just as deeply, just as greatly. I don't look back to God's redemption. I look right now and I see his redemption. No measure. No measure. As much as you want. I can just get drunk thinking about that. As much as you want of God, full, running over, spilling over, saturated, contagious, impacting lives, but utterly your heart being completely undone in his presence. He paid a price to withhold his presence from his son. He waited. And now he sends his Holy Spirit to bring honor to him, to glorify his son. I just want to read this with you in John 16. Oh God, John 16, verse 14. Well, we'll read from, I'll read from verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Actually, let me read from verse 5. And this is all in context of, of Jesus speaking that he's going to give his life. He's going to, fl- if you go earlier into chapter 15, you'll see how he's talking about um, laying his life down for his friends. So he's talking about his death. And then it goes on in chapter 16 and it says, never, never, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. And he's just said, But because I have said these things, sorrow has filled your heart. Because he's told them about the cross, sorrow has filled their heart. Verse 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Down to verse 14, he will glorify me. For he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Verse 13, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. The truth he was referring to, and some of you might not even, uh, whatever, but the truth he was referring to 
earlier in that chapter was the truth of the cross, was the truth of him laying his life down for his friends. And he's saying, this may cause you sorrow, that I'm going to give you my life. But the Holy Spirit's going to come and he's going to guide you into that truth. He's going to lead you right to the place where you see that I laid my life down for my friends. And he's going to glorify me. And so the father comes. Are you tracking with me? Simple. He talks about his sufferings. Jesus says he's going to send the Holy Spirit to guide you into the truth of his sufferings and to bring glory because of his sufferings. Okay, so he sends the father, sends the Holy Spirit to bring glory and honor to the son. What does the Holy Spirit do? He, what does he do whenever he works, whenever he moves? What is he doing? He's bringing about what Jesus died on the cross for. He's bringing the finished work of the cross. He's bringing his kingdom on heaven, on earth, meaning he's bringing what Jesus died for on earth. That's what the Holy Spirit does when he comes. So when the Father sends the Holy Spirit, what he's un- the undercurrent of what is going on is the Father is bringing glory and honor to the Son through touching you. Because he's a desperate Father who loves to honor his Son. And he delights in bringing glory and bringing honor to him. And I pray with all my heart that this week, that as you come and as you see the cross, even that fire inside of you that says, my life for your glory, my life for your honor, it's fanned into flames, becomes a burning fire that's contagious and that never, ever, ever burns out. God, we love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. If you guys just want to stand with me, we love you, God. We lift our hands to you, Father. We lift our hands to you, Jesus. We come into your presence, Holy Spirit. No veil. The veil's been torn. And we enter into your presence, God. We come in. We come into your presence. And we say, come, Lord. Will you come? Will you come, God? Will you come, God? Just begin to ask him that. Will you come, God? Will you come? Holy Spirit, will you come? Kura bashanda renda la basanda renda la basande. Kira baba baba sura baba baba shanda de 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 de. Do you know your primary purpose and your primary calling is just to love Him? It's to love Him. In all of its simplicity, it's to love him because he first loved you. Oh, we love you, God. And we want to love you more, Lord. And if those of you, you want to come forward to the front and just say, God, come, fill me. Come, fill me. Come, take over. Come, take over. I want your presence without measure. I want your spirit without measure. I want nearness with you without, without, without measure. Fill us up, God. Fill us up, God. More of you, Lord. More of you, Lord. Kura mashanda renda la basande. He chose to meet you at the cross. He chose to meet you at the cross. Kira ba 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 sura ba 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 sande de de de. God, we give ourselves to you, Lord. We give it all to you, God. We give it all, God. Even the parts we don't know how to give. Even the things we don't know how to let go of, God. We lay our lives at your feet, Jesus. God, and we say, take it all. 
Take it all, God. Take it all. Come, Lord Jesus, come. We belong to you, Lord. We were purchased. Purchased with your blood. And we joyfully lay our lives at your feet, God. You know, when you look at his son's sacrifice, when you look at what his son's done, when you look at what he's done for you, it's so easy to let go. It's so easy to say, God, have all of me, God. Have all of me, God. No limitations on my heart. No restrictions on my heart, God. Have all of me, Jesus. He loves your poverty. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when you come to him. And you say, God, I'm weak. God, I'm poor. God, I'm wretched. And I need you. I need you, God. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. So many of you have gotten clean today. Now it's time to really surrender. You've probably said these words many times, but would you trust Him? Would you trust the Lord? Would you trust him with the rest of your life? Give him everything now. Trust him. Jesus, we trust you, God. You did so much. We trust you. We surrender to you. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender everything. I surrender my life, my future. My plans, my dreams, I surrender, Jesus, and I trust you. Oh, thank you, God. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. So if you're making that surrender tonight... He wants to come and fill you. So if you if you feel like you've made that surrender and you're finished praying, would you stand? Do you want to pray it? You can stand if you're ready. Because he wants to fill you back up now. And if you're back in your seat, come on up too. Well, let's just all do this together. He loves this brokenness. And that's where he'll meet you. But we need to stand and rise and say, Okay, here I am, God. Take all of me. And I ask you to fill me. Come on in a little closer, everyone. Let's all get in closer. 
Come on, guys, a little bit closer. Shorabaka yarabasanda rabaka yarabasanda roboko yarabasanda rabasanda roboko. So let's ask him. Reach your hands up to the Lord. Not real high, just real comfortable. Just be comfortable. But in like a, a receiving mode. I just receive now. Say, come Holy Spirit. Fill me now. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to come. Come on these ones. They're just posturing their hearts before you. And they're asking you to come and fill them. And they're believing. And they're receiving. Whoa. Let's get all our staff up here in the front so you can so you can come and see. Come on up. We might Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Holy Spirit. Just receive more. Uh, just as he raised Jesus from the dead, he wants to come and raise you from the dead. Whoa. Whoa. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Now just let him fill you right where you are. Breathe him in. Breathe him in. You don't need anyone touching you. Just receive from heaven. We're just waiting on the Holy Spirit leaders. Just waiting for him. Because he's going to come strongly on some of you. And then he'll break out among all of you. Come, Holy Spirit. Just breathe Him in. Receive. 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 Oh. We probably are going to need a couple of catchers. Y'all can pray too, but. Oh. Yeah. Just go, leaders, just go to the ones you see him on first. up, Lord. Fill.
Hey, I think the Lord's saying something, guys. Listen to this. No. Say it again. No measure. No measure. No measure. No measure. No measure. No measure on what you can receive. No measure on what God can give you. No measure. Receive, receive, receive. Receive what he died for. Receive what he paid for. No measure. Take the limits off. Take the lid off. Receive, 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 receive. No measure. No measure. No measure. Receive, 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 receive. Take it in, take it in, take it in, take it in. Fill us up. Lord, will you come? Lord, will you come? He says yes. He says yes. Take it all. Uh, Take all that you need. (laughs) Woo! Open up. He's got more. He's got more. He's got more. You haven't scratched the surface yet. He's got more. He's got more. He's got more. He's got more. Open up. Open up. Open up. Open up. Open up. Fire of God. Joy, 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 tomorrow's Sunday, we got joy, we got joy, we got joy, more, 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 more. Hear my 